Hello and welcome to another exciting chemistry session. Uh, this is your host, Mr. Mwansayo Chemistry Tutor. So we are still in the series of acids, bases, and salts. So I will gladly give you a recap of what we talked about in lesson one. If you haven't watched lesson one, feel free to search for it on YouTube. So in lesson one, we described what an acid is. We looked at the, uh, the organic and inorganic acids. We described what a strong acid and the weak acid is. And we further went on and described the concentrated and a dilute acid. Then lastly, we looked at the physical properties of an acid. So as of today, we're going to focus on chemical properties of an acid. So chemical properties, these are just chemical reactions that acids undergo. So we're going to talk about three uh, chemical reactions. The first reaction is a reaction of an acid with a metal to produce metal salt and hydrogen gas. And then the second one will be a reaction of an acid and the base. And this base will be in form of a metal oxide and a metal hydroxide, which is referred to as a neutralization reaction. And our last reaction will be a reaction of a metal, I mean, a metal carbonate, which is also a base and an acid. And this will produce carbon dioxide. So under the chemical properties of an acid, we are only going to look at three chemical reactions. The first one is a reaction of a metal and an acid to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. The second one is a reaction which is known as neutralization reaction. A mate, I mean, an acid reacting with a metal oxide or metal hydroxide. And then lastly, we'll talk about a reaction of an acid and a metal carbonate, which produces a salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So I will quickly go to the first uh, reaction. So in the first reaction, we're saying when an acid reacts with uh, a metal, when an acid reacts with a metal, there is always a metal salt that is produced and hydrogen gas. But in this uh, video, I will try to be more elaborate on how a salt is produced. This, which we are referring to as a metallic salt. How do we produce this metallic salt? Because I know hydrogen gas is not a big deal. We know it's H2. But what is this that is known as a metallic salt? So when we go back to the examples of acids that we gave, we looked at organic acids and we looked at inorganic acids. So the common acids that we use especially in the lab or in the laboratory. We use hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, carbonic acid sometimes, phosphoric acid, and sulfuric acid. So I will, in my examples, I will use more of these five acids I have mentioned. Hydrochloric, sulfuric, nitric, phosphoric, and carbonic acid. Now, if we're going to produce what is known as a metal salt, a salt that is produced is entirely dependent on the acid that you're using. The name of a salt that you're going to produce is entirely dependent on the acid that you are using. And that is what this table is trying to, 
you emphasize. So in a case where I am using hydrochloric acid, I can only produce a salt that is known as a chloride salt. If I am using nitric acid, I can only produce a salt that is known as nitrate. If I'm using carbonic acid, I can only produce a salt that is known as a carbonate. If I'm going to use sulfuric acid, I will only produce a salt that is known as a sulfate. If I am going to use phosphoric acid, I can only produce a salt that is known as a phosphate. What does this mean? So this simply means that the name of a salt is entirely dependent on the acid that I am using. I cannot produce a sulfate salt when I am using hydrochloric acid. I can only produce a sulfate salt if I am using sulfuric acid. Let me give you a simple analogy. If you're going to bake a strawberry cake, you cannot use any other, uh, in, your recipe, uh, in, in your recipe menu, you cannot use, for example, a lemon to produce a strawberry cake. It means that in my recipe menu, I should have a strawberry and then I will produce a strawberry cake. If I'm going to bake a lemonated cake, I don't know if that exists. It means that I should have lemons in my recipe uh, uh, menu. So if I'm going to produce a salt that is known as a chloride salt, I should use hydrochloric acid. If I'm going to produce a salt that is known as a nitrate salt, I'm going to produce, I'm going, I mean, I have to use nitric acid. Then when it comes to a metal, a metal will just complement the name of uh, the, 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 the name of a salt based on the acid that we have decided to use. So if I'm using, in this case, we are using potassium as a metal, and then we're using hydrochloric acid, then we are saying this name should be called a metal chloride. So where there is a metal, I will just substitute the name of the metal that I am using here. And that is why it is called potassium chloride. I'm using calcium here and it's reacting with nitric acid. So on the metal part here, where we say metal nitrate, I'll just replace with the name of the metal and it becomes calcium nitrate. So this is how we produce a salt. So a salt is dependent on two things, a metal that you're using and the acid. We'll soon look at preparation of salts and it will give us more details on how we come up with a particular sort. But here, I'm just trying to give you a brief uh, background of where the metal sort is coming from. So a reaction of an acid and the metal will produce a metal sort and hydrogen gas. We'll give more details when we start looking at the preparation of a salt. So that is the first reaction. Let's go to the second reaction, which involves a base. So in the second reaction, we are looking at the reaction of an acid reacting with a base. Now, a base exists in three forms. A base exists in three forms. We have a base that exists as a metal oxide. 
we have a base that exists as a metal hydroxide, and we have a base that exists as a metal carbonate. Our reaction, which is known as a neutralization reaction, is as a result of using a metal oxide and a metal hydroxide, then reacting them with a, I mean, reacting them with an acid. So we can have sodium oxide. We'll soon look at the base and we'll be able to get more understanding of where this is coming from. So when sodium oxide, which is a base in form of a metal oxide, in form of a metal oxide, reacts with hydrochloric acid, it will produce sodium chloride, which is a salt. When we look at the general equation here, we will be guided. So this produces salt and water only. This is referred to as a neutralization reaction. Only two things are produced, salt and water. This is when we are using a base which is in form of a metal oxide and a base which is in form of a metal hydroxide. We'll soon look at the base and we'll be able to understand what is a metal oxide, what is a metal hydroxide. So these are called bases. So a reaction of a base and an acid is known as a neutralization reaction. It produces salt and water only. Now, in a case where we use a base, which is in form of a carbonate, a base which is in form of a carbonate, this is where reaction number three comes in. So let's look at reaction number three, and then we see the difference. So reaction number three, when we are reacting an acid with a base that is in form of a metal carbonate, in form of a metal carbonate, always there should be production of carbon dioxide. There should be production of carbon dioxide. So this one will produce three products. A salt, there will be a salt here. There will be water and there will be carbon dioxide. So those are the three common reactions that an acid undergoes. To give you a recap, the first reaction is a reaction of an acid and a metal that will produce a salt and hydrogen gas. The second one is a reaction of an acid and a base. Now, these two bases are supposed to be in form of a metal oxide or metal hydroxide to produce salt and water only. And this reaction is known as a neutralization reaction. Then the last one is a reaction of an acid and a base, but this base is in form of a metal carbonate. This will produce salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So we have come to the end of our session. If there are questions pertaining to what we have discussed in this video, feel free to ask the questions in the comment section. And if there are topics that you want us to tackle, feel free to comment those topics in the comment section. It has been your host, Mr. Monsai, your chemistry tutor. Until 
next time.